Now that the verification is done over an aperture, I could switch to Lightroom. To import is a pretty straightforward process. Choose File, Plugin Extras, and Import from Aperture Library. If you'd like some more information about what's going to happen, you could choose Aperture Import Info, and it gives you a dialog with key information about what will come in. I'll click OK and go back to File, Plugin Extras, Import from Aperture Library. Now that it opens, it scans to find any Aperture Libraries. If you've got more than one on your system, this may take a little while. Once the validation is complete, you'll need to run through a few options. First up, check the Aperture Library that's selected. You'll want to click the Select button, and you'll be taken by default to the Pictures folder. Navigate to the library that you picked earlier that you determined was the current active library. I remember that I had stored it on my Drobo 5D, and if I search by date modified, I could find the most recent one and click Choose. Make sure you've quit Aperture and had the library update if you were making any other changes such as building out the previews. Remember, Aperture updates the library upon quit, so successfully quit and save the application before invoking the Import from Aperture plugin. All right, we've got that there. Now I'm going to choose where to copy the images. So I'll click Select and navigate to my drive. In this case, I'm going to go to the main photo library, and I've made a folder called Aperture Import. You could do that with the new folder dialog or possibly right-clicking, depending upon your operating system. Choose the folder that you want to use and look over the dialog you'll currently see the number of files that are going to be imported. This number may be slightly lower if you had virtual copies or versions over an aperture. You'll see the amount of disk space required, in this case about 500 gigabytes, and the amount of space I have available on the unit I'm targeting. I recommend you click the Options button to set a few more choices. First up, I highly recommend importing those full-size previews from Aperture. You'll recall earlier that we went ahead and set full-size previews to be generated in Aperture. This means that a reference JPEG will be created for any images that have adjustments applied. When you check that, it may need to revalidate the Aperture library. Next, you could choose how to handle keywords. I recommend you only import keywords that were actually applied. This way it means that any of the default keywords or some that might have been made before but then the images were deleted, won't come across. This will limit any unnecessary keywords from making the jump. The next two options are all about how to handle things that are not supported by Lightroom. For example, color labels are unique in Aperture and they don't directly correlate over in Lightroom. This allows you to create Lightroom keywords based on those color labels. Also, you could choose to create keywords for any stacks. This will help you quickly find any images that were stacked together. You'll notice that you can only choose one of these options, either on or off. So while it's technically two checkboxes, you can only select it currently with one way. Below this is an important option on how to handle referenced images. I recommend go ahead and leave the referenced files in their original location. This will work well and it will make sure that you get the images to stay in their current location. Because I'm using a reference library, this will cut down on any unnecessary copying of objects between folders. What will happen here, though, is that the images could potentially be referenced by both Lightroom and Aperture, so you're going to want to minimize constantly jumping between the two applications. On the other hand, if you'd like, you could choose to take referenced images that were in their location and have the previews placed in the same folder. This will make it easier for stacking. I do recommend that you consider this option. Once you decide if you want to leave the existing reference files where they're at, or create a second copy, you can then decide what to do with the previews that you bring in. I recommend checking this box so that the images will be placed alongside. This means that it'll be a lot easier to automatically stack them together. So when you're browsing and you see the raw file, plus the preview with the aperture adjustments applied, you'll be able to then, in Lightroom, have an easier time. 
you could use this copy as a guide to recolor correct or perhaps quickly export if you're satisfied with the results as is. I'll give this a look over from top to bottom and click OK. And then once more, review the Import from Aperture dialog. When I'm set, I'll click the Import button to start the process. Now it's going to continue to actually import the images. This process may take a bit of time. If you have a large library, like I do have here, be sure to just let this run until it's complete. If you want to stop importing, you can click the Done button. However, it's really important to just let this run. You'll see that things start to come in and you'll notice in the background that images are updating. In fact, you'll see the progress bar up top show you what's going on, so you may notice a lot of changes. I recommend you let things run, preferably overnight, and then you can check back later to see how the import has come.